So for the smokestack, our cutting guide calls for several pieces of lightweight chipboard. I've got a 4x7 piece which will be used for the main part of the smokestack, then a 4x8 which is for the top, very top of the stack, and then uh, a little piece that is 3 quarters of an inch by 3 and 5 sixteenths, and that one is scored um, so from the scrap left over from the boiler. And then I had enough scrap left over from the boiler to cut a piece that is one quarter inch wide by nine inch long, and the little score lines are are going um, on the short dimension. So then I have a few pieces of medium weight chipboard here two circles that are one inch and one circle that is two inches and for the two inch circle I use the medium size die on the Tim Holtz circle die that I've been using. I also have a piece of dowel here which is four and three eighths inches long and then I have a compass because I'll need that. So on the templates we have three templates that we need for the smokestack. The main piece, the smokestack top, and over here at the side is the smokestack base. And let's talk about how to use these for these pieces. Now you could just trace them, or each piece of these curves has the outside radius and inside radius listed. So the other thing you could do, and I would especially recommend it for this long piece, is to just come and use your compass, mark a central point that the template looks like it will fit on, and then set your compass to these two dimensions and trace this. And then you can use for the main piece here, you can put this down on top of it to get these two sides here. Now don't uh, worry about this blue line yet. We'll be using that in a few minutes. That's the inside radius. For now, cut this whole piece of pie out. And then for the smokestack top, again it has an outside radius of 3 and 15 sixteenths and an inside radius of 3 and 9 sixteenths. So if you use your compass, set a point here. This has been sized so there's plenty of room here. And then you can just set your compass and draw those two radiuses and then use the template to know how long to have the curve. And then for the base it's similar to how we did the uh, two, um, sorry, the two domes, the steam dome and the sand dome, all we need to do is cut this little curve on the bottom. So I'll get my pieces cut out and then I'll be back. So I have all of my pieces cut out from the templates now and the first thing I want to do is check my curves on the base just like we did on the steam and sand domes. So I'm going to transfer the green markings to the chipboard, which will help us center it. And then go ahead and curve this around and join it together with some temporary tape here. Then I can drop in my two one inch circles and then just take this over to the locomotive and check my curves like we've done before. So my test for the shape on the bottom of the base here was successful so I can go ahead and permanently join it into a circle but before I do that I want to take a piece of cardstock joining strip and just go all up, attach that uh, to the inside of the flat edge. So I'll do that. And then once I have that joining strip attached, I can just use this as another little piece of the 
one inch cardstock that has not been scored that I've been using to join our cylinders. And I'll just curve this end where we made the join just so it makes a, a nice round shape and then just set that aside. So next we're going to work on the main piece and I have it here cut to the size of my template and we're going to do some scoring on this. And the way we're going to score this is to keep, I've got a central line drawn on my scoreboard. If you don't want to make a permanent line on your scoreboard, you could do something like marking it with a post-it or something like that. Just so I know, you know where you're aiming for each time. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of pivot this and make, uh, try to start, keep about an eighth of an inch every time I uh, pivot it. So I'm just starting here in the middle. I'm going to pivot till that mark I just made at the top is lined up with the eighth of an inch on the other side of my center. And I'm keeping this center point down here lined up. And I'll go ahead and score again. And I'll just keep repeating that process until I've scored the whole thing. And that will help us to be able to curve this more easily. So I'll get that accomplished and then I'll be back. And now that we have all of our score marks accomplished, we can go ahead and cut this inner radius. And now you just want to start training this, shaping it so that it makes a shape that we want. If you're interested in these shapes, they're called frustums of a cone. And there's a mathematical way to figure out what the radiuses should be and what this angle should be in order to get the dimensions you want. So it takes a little bit math, but it's all right. I, I enjoy math, so And once you have it wanting to curve nicely, go ahead and use another piece of this one inch cardstock and make the join here. Make sure you give this join a really good burnish and then just take a minute to work in a curvature where that join is. So now we're going to join the base to this piece and I'm going to do that by removing that score tape backing and just making a series of little snips oh, about every 3 16th of an inch or so. And then I'm going to just kind of fold these in a little bit so they won't want to stick prematurely to the cone part. And I'm going to take the join for this cone and put it somewhere near one of the lines that we drew. And it should fit pretty, pretty neatly right on top of that circle. And so then just reach in from the bottom and go ahead and attach all of the little tabs. Sometimes I do um, some on one side and then the other kind of working, you know, around the clock do 12 and 6 and then 3 and 9 and then come back and get them all worked in. And then if you put this on like the edge of the table, you should be able to reach in and burnish all those little tabs down. So we're building the smokestack up in sections and our next section will be this 
quarter inch straight piece that will go around here and we're going to join that with a piece of black card stock and I've cut this an inch and a sixteenth wide an inch and a sixteenth wide and I'm going to score it at a half an inch and three quarters of an inch a half and then three quarters then I'll go ahead and just give those a little score and then on my piece of chipboard I'm going to put some score tape on that and then go ahead and, and join that to that middle quarter inch uh, channel that we just scored. Then give that a good burnish and then I'm going to fill in on the two sides with score tape and I'm going to bring that tape right up against the chipboard. And now I'm going to take my craft knife and make a series of cuts that are about 3 sixteenths of an inch wide and I'm going to try not to let them to go all the way to that, the end of the score tape backing there just because hopefully that will make uh, it easier to pull off the backing when we go to join things. So I'll make that series of cuts down one side, flip it around, and again staying away from the edge of the backing, make another series of cuts on the other side. And then before we go attaching this, I'm going to take my black marker and come down inside of here oh, about a half an inch just in case our, uh, we get any gaps when we go to attach this. I don't want any of that raw chipboard to show through. Uh, so I'll go ahead and ink around here and allow that ink to dry uh, before we start attaching the straight, straight section. When we attach this strip, we're going to use the one half inch side to join to the inside of the cone. You'll want to take your time because our goal is to get it to be parallel. I'm find something here. Parallel with this section down here. The natural tendency will be to have it continue this, this line of the cone. But so you just kind of work it around so that you try to keep it parallel with, with that bottom. Um, it will, because it's cut straight, that will, that will of course help because it's not curved. But you'll just want to pay attention and try to keep it so that when it attaches the edge of it and you'll want to train this a little bit before you go to put it on but so that edge meets nice and, and flush there so hopefully you'll be able to remove these just as you need them kind of curve them out of the way And just go ahead and start. Now I'm going to start, where's my seam? Here's my seam. I'm going to start about a half an inch past my seam and go from there. Now I find it helpful to just look at about a quarter of an inch or so at a time, just kind of holding it up here next to my mat so that I can use the grid lines on my mat to kind of help me with that. And also, if you, I'm coming towards me with the strip, as you can see, but when I go put it on, I'm kind of pushing it back a little bit. And that seems to help it um, go where I want it to go, just a little bit. And just tack it down loosely to begin with, so that in case you um, need to make any adjustments, you can. And every so often, just take a little peek at it and see how it's coming along. 
Now I'm probably about an inch and a half away from the end and this piece was sized to um, be a little bit long. You may also know, notice I've got a little delamination here probably from the stress of, of turning this around so I'll just go ahead and put a little uh, glue in there and if that happens to you just take a moment put some glue on there. And then you'll just want to figure out where that end is going to be. We're going to want to make uh, just a butt joint when we get down there. So you can just let the pieces overlap and come in there with a sharp scissor and, and do that. Which is what I think I will do. First I'm going to just check all the way around here see how things look. And before I put this end down I'm going to put a little bit of spot of glue in between those two pieces there. And then I'll also come back and put a piece of uh, cardstock joining on the inside. So I'll do that and get this all burnished down and then I'll be back. So I gave that a good burnish and now we're ready to attach our very top piece and first I'm just going to train it to curve around a little bit. Now the outside of this is what gets attached to the smokestack so that it ends up coming slanting in. Hopefully you can kind of get the idea there. So I've given this a good burnish on the inside and now we're ready to attach our last section which is this curved piece and I've just kind of trained it a little bit just kind of with my fingers so that it wants to go in the right direction. And I'm going to start this piece on the other side of that side seam. Oh, probably about a half an inch on the other side. So I'll just pull off some of this backing. And then again, we'll want to meet these edges. So it should sit flush there, but this one's going to curve inside. So as we put this on, we should notice it coming at, at an angle towards the inside. So just again, take your time. Let it make that angle. Remove your backing as you need to. And I've again stopped oh, about an inch and a half from the end so I can see um, how long to make this piece. I'll just leave my backing on there and then I can come around here and mark that piece and cut it off. And I'll again put a little bit of glue right between that seam there and finish attaching this down. I'll come back on the inside and reinforce that join with a little piece of black cardstock and go ahead and give everything a, a good burnish all the way around. And now to finish off the construction, I think you can see I've marked and punched a center hole in these three pieces. We're going to set one of the small ones aside for right now and we'll take the other small one and we'll put it inside right here at the top or near the top of the base and then this other one fits down inside here you'll want to go ahead and test it out and see uh, where to put your line of glue in there and glue that in and let that set up for a few minutes. And to help you get the large one in there, just stick it on the end of your dowel and use that to hold on to it to get it in there and keep it straight. 